Hey guys, Jerry of Triton Fly Fishing, and today we're going to be tying an awesome, simple caddis fly staple. We're going to tie the Holy Grail caddis. It's a great pupa pattern, and the reason it's so great is it does a really awesome job of matching the profile while being super, super simple and easy to tie. Let's get started on it right now. So in the vise today, um, I have a weird hook. I have a TMC C300BL, so a barbless curve shank hook in a size 12. Uh, you, you could use like a Tiemco uh, 2488 or something like that, something more standard. But I'm a real big fan of these needlepoint uh, curve shank hooks that they're coming out with. I think this is in their competition series. Um, and they're great. They're awesome. They're super sticky sharp, and I really like them. But you can tie this on almost any curve shank nymph hook. So I also have a gold bead. This is a tungsten bead. It's sized to match. Um, you can change up the bead color. You can change up the fly color. Um, I really just love to fish this in a classic hair's ear with a gold bead. It's super simple and it works. So the first thing we're going to do is start some thread on this. And I have UTC 70 in red. And where I'm going to start my thread is important. Uh, you'll see when we get going on this, the bead is actually not going to be at the eye when we end. So... You want to use this hook point as your measurement. It's important that we do not crowd this space here. We're going to pull the bead back to here, and we're going to want at least a hook, uh, hook eye gap in front of our bead. So keep this point, keep your thread right at this point. Tiny bit above is fine, but do not crowd that bead. So the next step is to put in some flashaboo, just pearl flashaboo, regular old flashaboo, and just tie that in right on my side of the hook. Roll it to the top and bring it down. We're going to bring this down. This is a curve shank hook, and we like to use that whole curve shank. So we want to bring this down to a point. And I, I see it as an angle here. Whatever this angle here is about right, but it's almost halfway down that bend, but not quite. So bring that back up a couple of turns, and we'll leave it right there. And then we're just going to start dubbing our body. So for dub... Again, I, I have a hair's mask here. Um, I've pulled off a good amount of fibers. I got some I got some soft fuzzy stuff in there. I have some guard hairs. It's just a great little blend. And you know, you can really achieve a lot with one of these natural hair masks. And that's why I prefer that. Picking my own dubbing rather than buying a pre-made dubbing. Uh, you can get these in a number of colors. Again, I have the natural here which for me is just a great versatile color, but they come in all of, they come in black. You can tie this in a number of colors. Uh, feel free to experiment. So we're just gonna dub a nice little noodle and get that going. And I like to keep it relatively thin. For me, this fly fishes when it has a nice thin tapered body and is chunkier up front. Uh, it's gonna vary, guys. Whatever you like, whatever you think looks good, you can go for. So I've got this little gap here, and we're just going to bring that back until I start getting some dub on this hook, and right there. And we're just going to bring this up, and like I said, keeping this nice and tight. But we want to put a little bit of a taper, so you may have to overlap a little bit. You could build your taper into your noodle, but I like a nice even dub noodle, and I can come back and over it to create this taper. You'll see me doing that right there. So again, right at that hook point, we're going to stop. That's going to be our stopping point. We don't want to go too much further than that. So let's start wrapping this uh, rib here. So nice tight turns. Get them down into that dub and create a nice segmented body. Be careful pulling too hard on this because you will stretch it out. But right there, whatever we have for turns, that looks great to me. So tie that off and we'll come in here with our scissors and just chop that out. Right there, guys. Super, super simple. So another great thing, easy material. Everybody should have it. We love it. Pheasant tail. This is going to be our shell back our right here. So what I'm going to do is pull oof, eight, ten fibers from the feather. Um, you'll see I got these nice fuzzy weird things. We'll just chop those out to make it easier to handle. I'll come around here and we'll take our tips out. We want to chop these tips off because they are soft and brittle so they will break so sometimes you know you look at this you got a dark side and a light side you can vary this up i like this light side on top so i'm going to tie with the dark side facing up and when i pull it over i'll get that nice light 
mottled color on top. So you want to make sure that's right on top. And it is. And you see here, this is about, it's about a bead. About a bead. Maybe a little more. But now we're going to dub that thorax. And again, it's just going to be Hare's mask. So you see I got a nice buggy, chunky piece here. And we're just going to dub this in. Create a nice fat thorax. Little looser, little looser than our body, but we can always pick this out. So I think I probably have a little much here, but we're going to go with it and see how it looks. So let's just get a nice bulbous chunky thorax in there and we'll push that back. Mm, you know, we could probably put a little more in there. So let's put a little more in there. So we're going to add a little more dub to this. Um, it's something we can adjust and we want to make sure that we are adjusting this making sure that this fits the way we want it to so right there and we can push this bead back a little bit so let's um let's do that let's push our bead back advance our thread and kick that bead into our body so we may have to push a tiny bit and i went a little i got a little overzealous i put a little too much in there but we still have enough room here it still looks good so let's pull this over um, let's take a look here. We got this pretty compacted, so let's flatten that out. We can do that by using our bead here to kind of spread these fibers. So right on top, and it did rotate on me, so we'll just pull it over a little bit. A couple of wraps, and then we'll come in here. We want to make sure that we don't have anything in this hook eye, so we want to get this nice and close. And good scissors really help. Let's take a look at this. This does look pretty good to me. If you want, this is pretty buggy. If you want, um, take a little piece of Velcro. This Dr. Slick tool I have works great. And kind of come in here and tease out some of this stuff. I think we did a great job and this is pretty buggy on its own. Let's see, that isn't exactly on top, but we're gonna roll with it. So the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna grab my soft tackle. I'm gonna grab a natural partridge hackle here. I have a whole skin and I'm gonna go and pick out a feather and I like these brownish ones I you know you see a lot of the gray with the black barring I like these brown ones and this is one that I've grabbed and I've prepared already so I'm only looking for a full turn here but I want to make sure that my fibers are you know about the length of this body and you'll see I got some shorter ones in there too so that's okay and I've created this little delta. I've stripped off my stuff, my junky stuff that I don't need. And we're just gonna tie this in right here. So let's get going on that. Okay. So right in here, we're gonna use that delta as our tie-in point. It's not gonna slip out. Get it in there, get it nice and tight. And you know what? I may have crowded this eye a little bit, but I think we can still make this work. So we'll pull this back those fibers laying back and then we'll take our turn here watch that stem doesn't get wrapped around your thread like you did with mine keep those going back Ooh, we got a mess but that's how sharp hook it's okay we're just gonna keep preening these back and you know what we're gonna get two wraps in here because it's looking a little thin you know what two wraps look good so we'll come in here and we'll take that out You'll see I kind of split that, so I have some fibers going forward, but we'll cut those out. Let's get our scissors in here. Okay. So let's see what we did. How does that look? You know, that looks pretty good. Yeah, that looks pretty good. We got a nice density there. I'm happy with that. So we're just going to come back, create a head. I'm using my thread now to lay those fibers back. And it's real cool with this, with the bead here. You know, it's really going to trap some air and give us that illusion of an emerging pupa with a trapped air bubble. And it, it's just going to help us create that, which is great. And we get some weight in there. So we're just going to whip finish real quick. My head's a little messy. I'm not too worried. Um, Got a nice little hot spot. We'll just come in here and we'll take this out. And then I'm going to finish this off with some solar res bone dry. This stuff is super, super thin. 
So I like to make sure there's barely anything on my brush. I'm just going to use the edge of my brush here and come in here and just coat this nice and easy. So once I got that fully wetted out, nothing's running and we'll just hit that with our light and we are good to go. Guys, that is the Holy Grail Caddis. Super simple, easy, yet effective. We got some soft tackle, we got some flash, we got some natural hairs here. Literally nothing better than that. Thanks for watching guys and we'll see you next time.